All right, strap yourselves in for this one because we are diving headfirst into some seriously heavy stuff today. Oh, yeah. Death's human. Definitely a deep cut. We're talking about those lyrics, the ones that make you question your place in the universe. And maybe your sanity while you're at it. Exactly. And to guide us through this lyrical labyrinth, we've got, well, you know him, our metal guru. Ready to dissect some of metal's finest work. And we're pulling all this lyrical goodness straight from the depths of Metal Storm's database. A treasure trove of head-banging poetry. Just a heads up before we get too far gone, we're all about analyzing the meaning here, not necessarily endorsing, uh, let's just say, the darker themes. Right. We're here to explore, not to preach. Exactly. And speaking of exploring, I know you've got a history with death being the metalhead you are. Oh, absolutely. A cornerstone of the genre. But Human, that album, it just hits different, doesn't it? It does, even among death's other albums. And they're all incredible in their own right. But Human. It's like a punch to the gut. Yeah, musically, it's this huge leap forward, but lyrically, that's where Chuck Schuldern, he really lays himself bare. It's like he's dissecting the human experience, but with a rusty scalpel. And he's not afraid to dig into messy parts. Not at all. Like in flattening of emotions, that line, where is the person that could have been? Who, what took over? When did the end begin? Chills, literal chills. Fear existential angst right there. Absolutely. It gets you thinking, you know. Big time. So what do you think? Is it personal for Schuldner, or is he just observing the human condition from a distance? I think it's both, and that's what makes it so powerful. On the one hand, you have this very personal cry for help, someone who feels lost, like they're being controlled by something they don't understand. Right, like that line, my thoughts are not my own, a mind shared by an uninvited stranger. Yeah. That's terrifying. It is, and it speaks to that universal fear of losing ourselves, becoming something we never wanted to be. It's like there's this battle raging inside his head. Exactly. And you see that theme pop up again later in Secret Face, this idea of duality, the masks we wear. It's like flattening of emotions, plants the seed for that internal struggle that really explodes in Secret Face. And that struggle, that feeling of being disconnected, it's something I think everyone can relate to, even if they don't listen to death metal. Oh, absolutely. But Schuldner doesn't just leave us there stewing in our existential dread. Thank goodness for that. Right. He dives head first into some really heavy ethical dilemmas, like with Suicide Machine, talk about a conversation starter. Yeah, you're not going to find that on your average pop song. Definitely not. And it's still such a relevant topic today, even after all these years. And Schuldner, he doesn't shy away from the complexities. No, he lays it all out there. The right to die with dignity, the sanctity of life. He makes you confront your own beliefs. And the way he uses the word machine <laughs> in the title, it's like he's highlighting this cold clinical approach to such a deeply personal decision. Right, but then the lyrics themselves, they're anything but cold and clinical. Yeah, he really humanizes it, focuses on the individual suffering, that plea for control when you're facing unimaginable pain. Exactly. And he does it by contrasting those stark, almost medical lines, like controlling their lives, deciding when and how they will die, with something so raw and emotional, like a request to die with dignity. Is that too much to ask? It's like a punch to the gut. He makes you confront those questions head on. Is it more humane to prolong suffering just to preserve life? Or should someone have the autonomy to choose their own ending? Those aren't easy questions to answer. Not at all. And I don't think Schuldiner pretends to have the answers, but he makes you think about them. It's like he's saying, here's the darkness, here's the complexity, now you deal with it. Exactly. He's not preaching. He's provoking. He wants you to confront those uncomfortable truths. And one of those uncomfortable truths is that sometimes we'd rather look away from the ugliness, blame others for our problems, instead of taking responsibility. And that's where lack of comprehension comes in, a song that just loses with frustration at that very human flaw. Oh, it's palpable. That frustration, especially in the line right before your very eyes, a reflection of the mistakes. To the end, you will deny your part in the demise of a life. Oof, that one hits hard. Right. It's like he's calling us out on our own hypocrisy, the way we judge others while ignoring our own shortcomings. It's classic, isn't it? We create the very problems that we then refuse to take responsibility for. It's just easier to point the finger somewhere else, right? Ah, absolutely. <laughs> it's easier to blame outside forces than to look inward, even if it means sacrificing truth and accountability. It's like that line you mentioned, to the end you will deny. It speaks to that, that deep-seated need to protect ourselves, even at the cost of truth. 
Self-preservation, even if it's self-sabotage in the long run, but there are moments where Schuldner seems to offer a glimmer of hope. Yeah, like in See Through Dreams, that song is a trip, both musically and lyrically. It's like a breath of fresh air in this really intense and dark album. Right. It's like he's exploring this idea of overcoming adversity, of finding strength and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of strength. For sure. Like that line, hands change into my eyes, body senses intensified. It's not just about physical adaptation. It's about perspective. Exactly. About navigating the world in a different way, embracing your other senses. And that line, through dreams I obtain, the ability to connect sight with sound, he's talking about connection even in a state of sensory deprivation. Finding ways to bridge the gap, to see beyond the physical limitations. Which is huge. Especially when you think about the rest of the album, all that isolation, the breakdown of communication. See Through Dreams offers this glimmer of hope, this reminder that even in darkness, we can connect. We can overcome those barriers that separate us. It's interesting, though, how he contrasts that very personal journey with something as vast and almost cosmic as vacant planets. Zooming out from the individual to the universe, looking at the consequences of human actions on a grander scale. Yeah, and it's not a pretty picture, this image of a civilization that's been forced to adapt to a hostile environment. And you can't help but think about our current environmental crisis. Right. Like, limiting our passages of thought. Are they the examples of regression, a life form's abusive progression? He's asking if we've learned anything from the past. Have we learned anything from the mistakes of other civilizations? Or are we doomed to become another cautionary tale? Another vacant planet. Exactly. It's heavy stuff, man. But even with all the darkness and despair, mm -hmm. Schuldner never really seems hopeless. There's this underlying sense of, I don't know, maybe not optimism, but recognition. Recognition of the beauty, the fragility of existence. Exactly. Like he's saying, this is it. This is the reality, the good, the bad, the terrifying. Now what are you going to do about it? It's a call to action, but it's disguised as this brutal death metal album. It's kind of brilliant when you think about it. It's wild, right? <laughs> we started out talking about how brutal human is. Which musically, it totally is. Oh yeah, no doubt. But there's this whole other layer to it, this vulnerability, this search for meaning and all the chaos. It's kind of beautiful. That's Schuldner's genius, though, that yeah. duality. For sure, he wasn't afraid to go there to explore the full spectrum of human emotion. From despair to those little flickers of hope. And he does it without being preachy, just raw, honest emotion set to some seriously heavy music. It's art that you feel as much as you hear it. Exactly. And I think that's why human has stood the test of time. It's not just headbanging music, although it's great for that. It's a reminder that even in the darkest parts of ourselves, there's still something worth exploring. And something worth fighting for. And sometimes it takes something as in your face as death metal to make you realize it. It's a wake up call, right? We have the power to destroy, but also the power to create to be better. The choice is ours. So as we wrap up this deep dive into death's human, I'm curious, do you think challenging art, the kind that forces you to confront the darkness, does it have to be enjoyable? That's the beauty of art, isn't it? It's not always about enjoyment. It's about pushing boundaries, making you think, making you feel. And sometimes that means getting uncomfortable. Exactly. And in those uncomfortable moments, that's where real growth happens. Well said. That's a wrap on our exploration of Death's Human. We hope this deep dive has given you something to think about. Keep exploring. Keep questioning. There's a whole world of heavy music out there waiting to be discovered.